ever ended up with one of these? I hope not, but chances are that you actually have, or at least know someone who has experienced what many people might refer to as a broken wrist. But did you know that, more often than not, injuries like this are actually isolated to the bones of the forearm rather than the wrist itself? Yes, really! In fact, fractures of the distal forearm are almost three times more common in children than fractures to the actual bones of the wrist. If you're interested to find out more about the anatomy of these bones and their fractures, then this is the tutorial for you. In order to fully comprehend the fractures of the bones of the forearm, let's quickly look back on their anatomical features. First, we're going to talk about the radius. The radius is the shorter of the two bones of the forearm and is so-called due to its ability to rotate relative to its neighbour, the ulna. As you can see in the illustration, it articulates proximally with the humerus, specifically at the capitulum. It also articulates both proximally and distally with the ulna. At its distal end, it articulates with the two lateral bones of the proximal carpal row, which are the scaphoid and lunate bones. Now let's head straight onto the neighbour of the radius, which is of course, the ulna. So as I mentioned earlier, the ulna is the longer of the two bones of the forearm. It articulates proximally with the trochlea of the humerus, as well as with the head of the radius. Distally, it again articulates with the radius, however the ulna does not articulate directly with any of the carpal bones of the wrist joint. Instead, it is separated from them by a small articular disc, which allows for a greater degree of rotation of the forearm as well as ulnar deviation of the hand. Now that the main anatomy has been covered, it's time to put our clinical gear on and talk about fractures. As we mentioned at the beginning of our tutorial, injuries which are often referred to as wrist fractures most often actually involve the radius and the ulna. Let's take a look and see what type of fractures are characteristic of this type of injury. As the radius is the primary load-bearing bone of the forearm, it is no surprise that the radius is more commonly fractured than its neighbour, the ulna. Most cases of distal radial fracture tend to involve falling onto an outstretched hand as we all tend to brace ourselves with our hands when we slip or trip ourselves. In the case of young adults, their bones generally tend to have strong structural integrity, meaning significant force is required for such injuries. In the elderly, however, in particular older women, the long bones tend to present significantly reduced bone density and are therefore much more susceptible to fracture. There are several classifications of distal radial fractures based on the fracture type, location, displacement of bone fragments, and the joint involved. One of the most well-known classes of distal radial fracture is collis fracture. In this situation, a transverse fracture of the distal metaphysial region of the radius is observed, with displacement of the bone fragment posteriorly and broken into pieces. In the case of a collis fracture, no damage is incurred to the articular plate of the distal end of the radius. The ulnar stylod process will often also be avulsed, or broken off in this instance also. A collis fracture presents with dorsal angulation of the wrist joint, meaning the joint appears displaced in the posterior direction. Another type of distal radial fracture is known as Smith fracture, which is in essence the reverse of a collis fracture, in that broken bone fragments are displaced anteriorly, causing palmar angulation of the wrist joint instead. Other types of distal radial fracture include Barton's fracture and Chauffeur fracture. As the radius and ulna are tightly bound together by the interosseous membrane, it is important to look for a secondary fracture or damage to one of the radio ulna joints when a primary fracture to the radius or ulna is observed. A radial fracture combined with a dislocation of the distal radio ulna joint is called a Galeazzi fracture dislocation. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. But don't let your learning stop there. Visit kenhub.com where you can read interesting articles, test your knowledge with challenging quizzes, 
explore our atlas with beautiful anatomical images, or watch more video tutorials like this one. Yes, you'll find everything you need to master anatomy in no time. Go on, click the button. You know you want to.